so welcome everybody. Thank you all for attending our first virtual graduate and professional expo. My name is Julia. I'm the community-based research assistant in Career Space at Trent University. Career Space provides an authentic outlook on the career landscape by providing Trent students and alumni with meaningful experiences, necessary perspectives, and valuable resources. We offer virtual appointments, workshops, online resources, and opportunities to connect with employers and recruiters. These services are free for all Trent students and alumni. You can visit our website, trentu.ca slash careerspace to book an appointment or learn about our services. We are thrilled to have a representative from Brock University Faculty of Education with us here today. Uh, before we go ahead and get started, I just have a couple quick housekeeping items to mention. I will ask you, Dorothy, to go ahead now and place your contact information in the chat box. Um, we should have 10 to 15 minutes for questions and discussion following uh, Dorothy's presentation today. Um, feel free to ask your questions at any time using the Q&A function located at the bottom of your screen and we will be able to collect those for um, answering during the Q&A period. And today's presentation will be posted to our Career Space YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest from Brock University Faculty of Education. Ask that you please introduce yourself and the floor is yours. Thanks so much. Uh, well, it's so nice to be here and congratulations to each of you for considering a career in teaching. You know, honestly, there has never been a better time to think about education. I think uh, around the world, uh, technology has enabled people to realize how important uh, both the ability to teach online and in class are, how important it is to have an education system that is filled with capable teachers like yourselves will be, and in general, just the um, important role that teachers do. So I'm going to um, uh, give you a little overview then of all the programs. Um, just to be clear, I'm gonna talk you know, really at you, as you know with these things, for the next good 10 minutes uh, to give you a thorough overview. Everything I'm saying at the end, I'm going to put into links in this chat so that you don't have to take notes. So everything I'm saying, you can find through accessing those links, which are, are pretty specific. And, um, and, and you could just ask questions at the end. Uh, yeah, so Brock University, uh, one of the things that is great about Trent and Brock is that you both, both campuses are in actually beautiful areas. So Brock University, oh, come on, there, uh, actually has two campuses. We have one in St. Catharines, which is a beautiful campus like your Trent campus is. And we have a second in Hamilton. And that campus is not unbeautiful, but it's not as beautiful as, uh, as the uh, Brock and Trent campuses are. It's a more urban campus. Um, the teacher education program is the only program at the Hamilton campus where the St. Catharines campus is the whole university. Um, each of these campuses are partnered with specific school boards. So if you would join us at our St. Catharines campus, you would have the bulk of your placements in the Niagara Catholic District School Board or the District School Board of Niagara. And if you joined us at the Hamilton campus, it would be with, uh, with the um, Hamilton Wentworth District School Board, the Hamilton Wentworth Catholic District School Board, Halton District, Halton Catholic, Peel District, Dufferin Peel Catholic, or the Grand Erie School Board. So those are the boards that we do the bulk of our placements with, not exclusively, but most. So an overview of the program. So all teacher education programs in Ontario follow a great deal of legislation. So they are all 16 months, although those months may be uh, divided up differently. In the case of the Brock program, we are a program that runs five days a week. It's a professional program and we have, uh, and it's full-time only, and we have programming for primary junior, junior intermediate and intermediate senior uh, teachers. It is 16 months with a break in the middle. So when we designed our program, we asked our students when they wanted it to start and how long they wanted to run straight through. And we do have a technological education program that runs straight through. It's different because that's what those students wanted. But by and large, our teacher candidates said, we wanted to start in the fall, have a summer off, that's how we get jobs, and that's how we you know, process information. It is also designed to be largely face-to-face. This year we're exclusively online and we can pivot to online as needed. But in general, our program is based on small class sizes, face to face. And then within each of those 10 credits that you'll take over the two years, uh, you will have online components. We've always had that. That's not just in response to this market. We've, we've done that for years, but we'll try to have you mostly together. 
Uh, we have a very strong integration of theory and practice. And for that reason, beginning in September, you end up going out into the schools uh, one day a week. And uh, it's highly collaborative. So it's an adult education model where you will be working together to create the learning that happens in your classes. And I should tell you that you won't have, have lectures anymore. There is no such thing as a lecture uh, while you're at Brock's teacher education program. And there's barely such a thing as a test. It's assignments, it's, it's presentations, it's working together, developing lesson plans, unit plans, resources for students in practicing and teaching. So it's, it's very, very much a hands-on integrative process. And of course, it leads to certification, recommendation for certification with the Ontario College of Teachers, which is what you need to teach in Ontario schools. But with your Brock uh, degree and OCT certification, you can teach across Canada. It's recognized across Canada as a teaching uh, credential, and it's highly sought after in the US as well as overseas. Um, you'll also be able to do additional qualifications or master's work. So uh, it is a two-year program, and the way it works is each semester builds on the previous. So in the first semester builds to the second, the second builds, and then the third, third to fourth. In the first year, you're really learning about schools and school systems, about the practice of teaching, and you're developing, just developing specialized pedagogy for your um, instructional focuses. Now we do this through a model we call the triple C, and that's that Venn diagram on the right. And this is a diagram that has, you know, coursework, community, and uh, what we call cohort. And it has you as the teacher candidate in the middle. So the coursework is this very uh, experiential, um, and experiential doesn't always mean going out in the field, but it means like really, you know, uh, an involved uh, seminar style learning. Mostly your classes are about 30, 35 students. Uh, the, the community is that Brock has, um, we have, associate teachers in the field who work with Brock and, and are your mentor teachers. We also have Brock faculty and instructors who come out to the field and work with you both on campus at Brock and in the field supporting. So it's a community of not just you going out to the school and becoming a member of that community. You are continued to be supported by Brock as well as by the professional associations we bring in. And then cohort. Cohort is, is, is fun. So you will be in a class of about 30 students and that group cohort, which could be a different course depending on the program you're in, meets once a week. And you, you learn from a growth mindset. You integrate uh, the important aspects of the school culture in that cohort with this group of 35 people where you can be very honest and, and developmental once a week over the course of the year. And in I'll pause there and just go to second year. So that's one course where you are together for the whole year. For the rest, your courses are with a variety of students from across your program. You're not together with the same group of students for all courses. When we go into the second year, you'll see that you're growing uh, as an individual. Uh, we change that cohort to what we call professional collaborative community. And you're now only going to meet five times over the year as a group because you don't need to talk as much just with each other, you'll be reaching out more to your associate teachers and, and with your instructors to have those ongoing dialogues. That second year is quite different. It's intense, it has many courses, and you have more time in practicums or teaching blocks in the schools in second year. Again, as I said, I'll be, um, I'll be chatting at you for this first bit, and then we'll make sure all your questions are answered uh, as we have a better dialogue at the end. This is a quick overview. Uh, it's actually slightly out. There's an adjustment for next year that will be in the internship area. But roughly speaking, uh, and you're going to receive a PDF, uh, a link to a PDF, so you'll have all this information. Um, in the fall, uh, if you're in the, uh, in the fall, all programs have 12 weeks of classes and a two week internship, which I'll, I'll talk to you what that means. And then in the winter, you're going to have, if you're in the primary junior and junior intermediate programs, You'll have five weeks of practicum, so you're out in the field with your associate teachers, 12 weeks of classes. But if you're in the intermediate senior program, you're going to have 12 weeks of classes and five weeks out in the field. The second year, it's six weeks at Brock, six weeks in the field, six weeks at Brock, six weeks in the field. And this, uh, when you download this, will give you an idea of the, the range of courses that uh, you'll be able to take. So teaching experience, of course, that's the most, uh, for most teacher candidates.
that's the part that they enjoy the most. So it is a range of experiences. Uh, so it, um, you will be scaffolded. So what this means is initially you'll go out and you'll just uh, have what we call structured experience days. And these are days where through that cohort, you'll have things you're looking for in the school. There'll be you know, a group of you going to a school. It might be about, this year be about uh, COVID protocol. It could be about uh, fire drills. It could be about uh, the way the, uh, the, the rooms are set up. It could be a around understanding divisions and uh, responsibilities in secondary school, lots of things. So you'll have a series of days where you're largely looking and observing in a general sense at schools. Then you'll have observation days. And these are when you'll move into a classroom that you're going to be teaching and you'll really start to observe how that teacher is running their class, what the assignments are, the nature of the students. And, and again, there's, there's work that goes with that. You'll then move into an internship. Now an internship is special at Brock. You will be teaching during your internship, but you won't, and you will receive feedback, but you won't be evaluated. So in other words, you have that opportunity to try and develop but it won't hit, so to speak, the report card. It's a time when you and your associate teacher and you and your Brock mentor really figure out what works and doesn't work for you. And then in your blocks, that's where you'll begin teaching and being assessed for it and evaluated. But even there, you don't just walk in the first day and have to do it all. You'll teach several sections and then more sections and then you'll get into the reporting and, and, and all those good things. So it's an iterative scaffolded process. You'll get a continuum of feedback, both from Brock of your Brock instructor, as well as from your uh, associate teacher in the field. And generally, you'll be placed in two divisions. Um, if you're in primary junior, you'll have you know, the primary and then a junior placement. Junior intermediate, you'll get one of each. And um, uh, intermediate senior, same thing. Now, with intermediate senior, you will talk about this, you'll have two teachable subjects, and you will get a placement in each of those teachable subjects. Uh, but you'll have three full placements. So uh, how those look, uh, whether they would be at one school or at two schools, whether with a teachable subject, ideally it would be your first teachable, then your second, and then your first. And if these words don't mean a lot to you at this time, I'm going to circle back to them. Um, so it does vary a little bit with program, uh, how the school boards are able to accommodate you, and, um, and the nature of the year. The other thing is that I want to tell you is that your part, your placed in our partner school boards. We make the placements with those boards. Uh, you do not make your own placements. If you have been successful in your placements, then we give you the opportunity to do what we call out of regions or alternative placements. So an alternative placement would be, um, let's say you're very interested in outdoor education. You might complete your year in an outdoor education placement. Uh, if you're interested in working in a museum in a teaching capacity, you might do a museum placement. We've had international placements with um, uh, in Central America. Uh, sorry, with this program in um, in South Africa and in uh, um, and in Ghana, um, we have different placements uh, that depend on the year. And I must be honest, this year with COVID, I'm not sure what those will look like come the spring. But you also have what are called out of region. And this is, again, if you've been successful and there's a particular school board you would like to go to that we do not partner with, you may be able to uh, finish your year at Brock in that partner school, non-partner school board. So um, that is uh, kind of the highlight of the practicum area. And again, these are the school boards as we spoke about uh, previously. Now, beyond the core program, we have a lot of professional development. You know, when you look closely at the courses and at the programs across faculties of education, and if you want, you can ask me, you know, why I should come to Brock, and I'll, I'll gladly give you that sort of a sales pitch later if you like, and I use the word sales pitch in quotation marks because it's not. They're really good reasons to choose one school over another. But when you look at us broadly, we end up looking quite similar because we all have to meet the requirements of the Ontario College of Teachers. Now there are specific and important differences, but, but in many ways, it's really important that our curriculum is similar. Um, you would not want to go to a doctor and have to determine which med school she graduated from to be sure that she knew about, I don't know, nutrition or immunology. You expect all doctors to have a foundational knowledge and the same is true with faculties of education. And we recognize that at Brock. So we've developed a very comprehensive um, professional development program 
which is um, for you to enjoy. You can participate as much or as little as you like, which will really allow you to personalize your learning, uh, demonstrate to principals and hiring folks how you've gone um, and made your degree mean something uh, to the classes you're going to step into. So we have workshops, conferences, volunteer opportunities, optional courses, and we have a very um, nice system called the Experience Plus Co-Curricular Transcript, a really official, uh, polished way for you to track these things to include them when you um, apply for jobs. Uh, we have extensive career support. We have extensive professional academic advising that is only for our Faculty of Education. And of course, um, if you've watched McLean's, you'll know that we are rated as one of the strongest schools for um, experience as well as student mental health and other student supports. So that's kind of the overlay of the program. Now I'm going to talk about applying to the program. And like I said, I promise you'll get to your questions. So there are three steps. There's a minimum academic requirement. Um, and then if you are going on to junior intermediate or intermediate senior, there are specific program academic requirements. And then there's our experience profile. Regardless of the program you apply to, you have to apply with 10 full university credits and the minimum we will accept is a 70% average. So 10 university credits uh, refer to full year courses, and they can, uh, but it could be made up of two half year courses. Uh, we do not uh, distinguish between which university these credits came from. So if you did two years at Guelph before transferring uh, here to Trent, then you could use your, we could look at your credits up from your Guelph transcript. Um, you can have a half credit in science and we'll pair it up with a half credit in history. We are working to give you your highest possible average when you send us your transcripts. Uh, the average, uh, so we look at that average, we take it, and that average will count for 50% across those credits, 50% of your application. So that's what we're looking for. Um, and this website, which I'll give you, uh, goes into detail. Now, if you're applying to the primary junior, jun, uh, primary junior program, so you want to teach uh, JK to six, uh, we will give you, so that's your academic requirement. We will also look favorably upon, you don't have to have these credits, but we do prefer you to have a credit in math, science, English, a full or a half credit. And we uh, also give a slight nod to folks who are applying with an early childhood education or youth studies degree. So there are no other specific, actually, requirements other than those 10 credits. But if you were in second or third year and you were trying to figure out what should I take as electives in my program, remember as a primary junior teacher, you're going to have fun. You're going to be teaching, you know, math, science, language arts, drama, dance, phys ed, dance, dance, phys ed. And uh, so taking some credits in those curriculum course areas uh, will not make a difference to your application but it will make a difference to your ability to teach, you know, your strengths, what you already know when you come to the program. But of course, if you could take those science, math, and English, that would be handy. Junior intermediate. Now here you have to have what we call one teachable subject. That's like when you were in school, remember the rotary teacher? You went to somebody else's classroom, maybe for, maybe for science. You have to have some depth in that in order to teach it. And so we, uh, you'll see that on the right-hand side of this screen, and again, you get this in a, in a printout or a, a PDF that you can download, um, three full university credits with an average of 70% or greater in that teachable subject. At least one of these credits has to be at or above the second year level. And um, you have to have at least two of these three credits completed by the time you apply. Now, here's one of the differences between universities. We don't all offer junior intermediate or offer intermediate senior. Brock offers all three programs. And also we don't all offer the same teachable subjects. So for instance, if you wanted um, social studies as a teachable subject, we don't have it at Brock. Our teachable subjects are French as a second language, English, math, history, geography, visual arts, dramatic arts, health and physical education, science, general, and music vocal. In the intermediate senior program, and that's so that you can teach grades eight to 12, you have to have two teachable subjects. And again, if you wanted family studies, we do not have that at Brock. What we have is French as a second language, English, math, history, geography, uh, visual arts, dramatic arts, health, physical education, and then all four sciences, general, chem, physics, and bio. 
And in this case, you have to have, again, more depth because you're teaching those university-bound students like yourselves. So we have to have five, you have to have five full university credits with an average of 70 or better in your teachable subject. Um, three have to be at or above the second year level. And a minimum of three of the five have to be done at the time you're applying. Uh, and then your second teachable is three credits at 70, uh, at least one at the second year level, and a minimum of um, three, uh, a minimum of two of the three by the time you apply. So that completes everything on kind of the academic side. You also have to have an experience profile completion. Again, quite different at Brock. Our experience profile is not an essay. It is not a statement of why you want to be a teacher. It is just um, hours that you present to us and explain what they are through a multiple choice. So with your application, experience is really important to us. And so you have to present with two significant experiences. Between those two experiences, you need 200 hours. So 120 hours in one, 80 hours in the other. These experiences can be volunteer or paid. They can be Canadian or international. They can be in large group settings or individual students. They can be face-to-face -face or virtual. What's important is that they, uh, you get some, at least one of these, ideally, shows you with the age group you want to teach. You could have two, but you, one of them shows you with the age group you want to teach. It's really great if they show you in some sort of a leadership school capacity. This is a unique, unique year. Uh, in that it may be that you have, you know, years, often students will present with years of um, lifeguard training or, or, or they might have had camp counseling. And then this year was a little harder to figure out what to do because so many things were not available to you in the summer. We have always accepted your leadership positions as one of your experiences. So if you, um, if you worked at American Eagle and you did shifts and you were the shift manager, and you were in charge of others, that absolutely can count for one of your experiences. So uh, your practicum, uh, sort of placements, co-ops, experiential learning opportunities in your undergraduate degrees can count. So think broadly about your experiences. Uh, they don't just have to be maybe what you thought, which is what you did this summer. Another catch on this is not a catch, but another point to remember is that the experience has to be validated by someone who is not your relative. So if you uh, worked as a tutor through a school for you know, a number of hours, somebody in that school will contact them to make sure that what you have said is true. You worked you know, 36 hours tutoring grade three students in the library. With that said, we will never ask that validator to comment on you. So in other words, we're not going to ask them if they were uh, for a letter of reference. We're not going to even accept a letter of reference. We're not going to ask for any specifics about you. It's only about whether or not the information you presented is correct. And here are some websites. So uh, before I go to the questions though, I do just want to go here to show you on this website. Again, I'm going to give you all these links. But I'm this is really sorry to cut you off, but yeah. we only have about three minutes left and then I've got to go to another webinar. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had till two. That is absolutely my mistake. I would have cut this shorter. I apologize profusely. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. That's totally okay. Uh, so this website, uh, I'll send, drop the links in a moment into the, um, into the chat. But uh, let's stop sharing the screen and get your questions answered. Hi. Sorry about that. I'm really sorry for the miscommunication there. Um, so one student is asking for some specific examples of internships. Um, so I'm just going to put, by the way, the, the, the things into here so that you have them when we leave. Um, so internships. So uh, with the teacher education program, they will always be, uh, so with the internships as opposed to placements, so they would be a teaching opportunity, just like a regular teaching block uh, in a classroom with an associate teacher. You would be doing some classroom teaching, planning, evaluation, and assessment, but you wouldn't be graded on that. You would receive feedback, but you would not be uh, rated on it. And again, with that particular situation, uh, you might be teaching uh, your teachable subject. If you first teachable, if you were in a secondary school, uh, if you're in a primary school, you could be teaching any portion of the day. Uh, do you offer entrance scholarships or grants? 
Yes, when you um, click on the websites that I've just given you, one of them includes a, a student awards and uh, there are uh, varying uh, awards. Okay, and really quickly, and then I do have to wrap up, how long do most students take to graduate? It's a two-year program and you have to complete it full-time in the two years, 16 months. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you very much, Dorothy, and, and to all of our students in attendance today for taking the time to learn about these opportunities with Brock University Faculty of Education. I have to hop off now for another webinar, but um, in the chat, there is uh, Dorothy's information and as well a bunch of great resources that she's provided. Um, we do have a couple of events coming up, which is the Graduate and Professional School Expo and the um, uh, personal statement workshop and um, I don't have time to tell you all about them but please do email us for more information and we will be sure to reach out to you with that uh, and now I really do have to go so thank you so much for your time Dorothy and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you you too.